Okay, so this is gonna be a very quick, very fast, I hope very, very, very productive video on zone training, but not perhaps from the physiology side of things, little bit of physiology, but mainly just my interpretation of zones. I've been a runner for 20 plus years. I'm an Irish Olympic marathon runner. I'm a professional for Under Armour. I've ran 209 for the marathon, 6108 for the half. I'm not a sports scientist. I'm not too deep into my physiology, but I want to give you some kind of understanding of what you can take from zones, what to start working on in training, what sort of sessions you can do that will improve each zone, how to make sure over a month that you're working on each zone, don't neglect certain areas of your zones, areas you wanna avoid, areas you don't wanna to spend too much time, and then really where the big benefits are in training and where you wanna be spending a lot of time, and how to not neglect some of these really important areas in training. Okay, without further ado, let's talk about zone one. Zone one for me, very, very easy. Very, very bottom end of that fitness curve. I've talked about fitness curve in some of my other videos. It's basically, in cycling, cyclists come in, they do testing, it's called a step test. They do the step test. What their management does is, people like Team Sky, etc. they take this fitness curve, and the fitness curve is how fast the rider is riding, how high their heart rate is going, and what effort they're putting in. How much lactate are they creating? Fatigue, really simple. Speed, fatigue, that's all you gotta know. What they do is they map that against the likes of a rider that would win the Tour de France. Then they say, how do we get you from here to here? That is your fitness curve. Obviously, as speed goes up, so does fatigue. For some of us more than others. Anyway, fitness curve. What you're looking to do is work that entire curve. At the early stages of your curve, zone one. Very, very easy, all about recovery. Now, zone one for some people, if you're new to running, you might not even be tapping into zone one because you might find that by the time you get to the top of the street, your heart rate's already gone out of zone one. And so what you might want to do is some cross training, spin bike, elliptical. You might just wanna make sure that you are working your heart rate in that potentially 120 to 140 range. When I was at altitude and I was just getting back into training, I had to cycle to work at zone one because honestly, just by running, my heart rate was going above zone one. But don't neglect it. Brilliant for aerobic development, brilliant for recovery, and quite enjoyable. Spend time in zone one. Zone two, my understanding and knowledge of zone two is steady state. Steady state is likely one of the only scientific terms that everybody can kind of agree on. But this isn't a video about science. Steady state is where you're gonna spend a little bit of time just before you get to the thresholdy type areas. I've done lots of videos on threshold, so I'm not gonna to talk too much about it, but zone two is where you're gonna spend a good chunk of time, but it's really good for you. You might find after you spend a bit of time in zone two, and for me, this is 140 to one sort of 55 heart rate. When I spend time in there, I'm a little bit more tired during the day. It's really useful, but it does tire you out a little bit psychologically because you have to focus a bit more. You have to leave the house with a little bit of intent. What can you do to start including some zone two? Don't go crazy. I can do quite a bit of running at zone two because I've established a robustness over time. What you could start to do is start adding in perhaps on one or two of your runs per week. If it's a 40 minute run, add in three times five minutes in zone two, three times five minutes at steady. At the end of the week, write down how much time you spent in zone two, tally it up. Do you still feel okay? Are you still healthy? Are you looking after your nutrition, your recovery, all that stuff? But if you're in a good place, add a little bit more the next week. But do it in a progressive way. And perhaps think more about a month, not a week. And if you do it in that nice progressive way, you'll stay healthy, but you'll start to develop zone two. Zone three, for me, remember, this is just my interpretation. Zone three at the very bottom end is that lower end of threshold, what I would call aerobic threshold. This is likely a speed that you could run for about two hours, but it's super important. Developing this speed takes a lot of time, years and years and years. I mean years and years. 
It might have took me 20 years to get it from about 15 kilometers an hour to 18 kilometers an hour. 20 years. But you have to do it and you have to be really patient with it. So many athletes think they're running in zone three at the bottom end and they're not. They're already perhaps at the top end of zone three, moving into zone four. You know the likes, you go on Strava, they call it a threshold run, it's quicker than their 10K PB. We'll talk about that another time, but let's get back to it. Low end of threshold, for me, that's probably about 156 heart rate, up to about 162. Middle of zone three, up towards zone four, is kind of like mid to high end of threshold. We're moving up into anaerobic threshold. Now we're starting to go a little bit of anaerobic, which means we're building fatigue quicker than we were, which means we're using more carbohydrates than we were. We were mostly fat, now we've moved into carbohydrates. What happens when you do too much work in the carbohydrate range? You run out of carbohydrates, you hit the wall. Really simple. That is the best area that you can work. Middle of zone three, up to zone four, middle end of threshold, up to high end of threshold. You're looking at your, that's your 60 to 80 minute minute window. If you went out the door and you ran for 60 to 80 minutes, well trained 60 to 80 minutes. If you're not well trained, it might only be your 40 to 50 minutes, but you would work on that. You, you do some of the sessions that I'm gonna tell you and you'll develop an ability to run for longer in these zones. That's really important. Some people race a 10K, some people just run a 10K. There's a difference. Very well prepared, like some of my 10K plans, half marathon plans, you race a 10K or a half marathon, you don't run a 10K or a half marathon, and there is a difference. Zone three, some example sessions. When you're working the bottom end, you can do things like 10 by a K with 30 to 40 seconds rest, five times 2K with 45 to 60 seconds rest. The reason I break it up into reps is it's a little bit more gentle on the body, but you get the same benefits. That's at the very bottom end. You've got that shorter rest. Once you move up to mid to high, you can do things like eight by 1K with 60 seconds rest, five times 2K with perhaps 60 to 75 seconds rest. And of course, because you've prolonged the rep length, you're getting a little bit of extra recovery. As the reps go up in distance, you might have to slow the speed down. Let me give you an example. Bottom end of zone three for me, five times 2K, I'd have to run about 320 per K. If I went top end of zone three, I could do five times 2K around about probably 610 right now. That's 15 seconds per K faster. However, bottom end of zone three, if I did 1K reps, I can run about 310 to 315. So start to have a think about when you're planning these sessions, rep length is gonna dictate pace. Because of course, the longer you go, the harder it gets. The shorter you go, the faster you can run, but keep the effort the same. So if you do want to work on your pace, well then plan sessions with shorter reps. You can still do zone three, but by bringing the rep length shorter, you can go a bit faster. Moving up into zone four, I now call this aerobic power. Aerobic power is top end of threshold. And to be honest, I call it tempo. Other people might not. I don't love the word tempo, but it's moving into a slightly harder area. You're starting to work a bit harder. It's not easy doing work in this range. And the likes of the sessions that I would do are probably once every 10 days, I would go and do a session that I know is gonna be aerobic power. My heart rate is now kind of like 168 up to 175, maybe like that seven beat range. And what I do is I might do things like at the very beginning, eight times 1K with 60 seconds rest, and I'd have to go about 255 per K and I'd really be working. My heart rate would take a little bit to get up into that range, but I know the effort would be there. Then you can progress the length of those reps to possibly five times 1200 meters and maybe even four times 1500 meters, but keep the recovery less than 70 seconds because you don't need to go super quick. You're trying to work in intensity and that's your zone four. Moving into zone five, we're really up into VO2 max now. Zone five is very important, but don't spend too much time up here. This is the 
cherry on the cake. This is the final little bit of that progression. You really want to develop zone two and three the most and zone four or five when you've got a race coming up in five to six weeks time. Start to knuckle down on four to five. Two and three, you can develop all the time. You should be developing all the time. One week should not go by without working on at least zone two or three, preferably both. And dedicate full sessions to each. Don't mix and match. Do a full session of zone two, do a full session of zone three, etc. Zone five, VO2 max. If I'm gonna give advice, I'm gonna say do your VO2 max sessions on a hill. That means that you can work harder, but take away some of the pound and and perhaps if you're not doing a brilliant gym routine and you're not doing prehab or activation stuff before you leave the house, injury risk can be quite high. So start doing your VO2 max sessions uphill. I would suggest doing a decent warm up. You can go to my website, joggingroom.com. There's a really good warm up routine on there, which gets you into sort of zone two or three by the end of the warm up. So it's not such a shock going straight into zone five. Go to a hill, do three minutes on the flat, hopefully around about zone three, come back three minutes rest, then do your first hill rep around 10 times 60 second hills. If you want to break it up into 45 seconds, minute hills, 30 second hills, that's fine. Do a jog back rest and you want to be doing between 10 to 15 minutes worth of reps. Then what you can do is you can prolong the rep length. So you can come back maybe 10 days later and you can do 15 minutes worth. So maybe you'll do five sets of one minute hill, jog back down, two minute hill, jog back down, one minute hill, jog back down, two minute hill. You're breaking it up into five sets of one and two minute hills. These are brilliant. Embrace that they're difficult. Embrace that you'll be breathing and probably feel underwater. Don't neglect zone five. Don't do it all the time. Start to bring it in maybe six or eight weeks out from a race. Keep it in the program year round, but perhaps maybe every two to three weeks. When you're getting to that six to eight weeks to go sort of crunch time, bring it in once every seven to 10 days. You're gonna get a big benefit from that. And that's my interpretation of the training zones. <laughs> I've used those training zones in my training plans, 10K half marathon marathon plan. You can check those out. You can check out the run and masterclass at joggingroom.com. Start paying attention to this stuff. Go check out the website. There's so much free stuff. If you wanna be better at running, cannot recommend it enough you'll get heaps of even free stuff on there that's going to help you move forward. Start to enjoy your run a bit more. Be proud of yourself. Give yourself a hug. Pat yourself on the back. Go look yourself in the mirror and say, well done. Well done for just getting out the door and trying. Well done for watching this video because you want to be better. Isn't that amazing? Take care. Happy running. Thanks so much.